In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory for God forever. Wrapped in the cloak of justice from God. Bear on your head and mitre that displays the glory of the eternal name. For God will show all the earth your splendor. You will be named by God forever. The peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. Up, Jerusalem, stand upon the heights. Look to the east and see your children gathered from the west, at east and the west, at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on foot by their enemies, they left you, but God will bring them back to you, borne aloft in glory as on royal robe th th thrones. For God has commanded <clears throat> that every lofty mountain be made low, and that the age-old depths and gorges be filled to level ground, that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forests and every fragrant kind of tree have overshadowed Israel at God's command. For God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory, with his mercy and justice for company. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness. How I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was the governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Ethuria, and Trachoconists, and Licinius was tetrarch of Abilene. During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. John went out, went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. A voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. First, just like to say a word of really welcome back 
to Deacon Steve Lewis to St. Joseph Parish. Glad to have you here serving with us. <laughs> Deacon Steve is another one of those um, people here at St. Joseph who has seen me grow up. Grow up. <laughs> I can't really get away from that. <laughs> but it's a privilege and a joy to have you here with us, Deacon, and we're glad to have you certainly back here at St. Joseph, along with Deb, your wife, as well. So God bless. Each year, each year we hear these words from John the Baptist on the second Sunday of Advent, prepare the way for the Lord. St. John the Baptist is the icon for Advent because he is the bridge that shows us the way into the joy of the new covenant in Jesus Christ. St. John shows us the way to Jesus. Prepare the way for Jesus in your hearts, minds, and voices. Origen, who was one of the great church fathers, he asked this question about the words of St. John the Baptist. What way are we to prepare for the Lord? What way are we to prepare for it? Listen to the full quote. He says, Prepare the way for the Lord. What way are we to prepare for the Lord? Surely not a material way. Can the word of God go on such a journey? Should not the way be prepared for the Lord within? Should not straight and level paths be built in our hearts? This is the way by which the word of God has entered. That word dwells in the spaces of the human heart. How many of us are constantly and maybe a little bit obsessed during these days about Christmas preparations? It's pretty common. Or preparations for something else, like a wedding. How often do we hear people say during this time or any time of our life, I'm trying to prepare a safe space for whatever. Or we occupy during this time of year in, in our lives, we occupy lots of spaces, we prepare lots of ways, we are constantly looking for opportunities to be more happy, to be more fulfilled, more entertained, more in tune with the world and with others. But we look outwardly for this joy. We look outwardly for someone else and something else and something else to fulfill us. Jesus is the word of God. He is not that interested in all our exterior and material interests. He is to a degree, to the degree that it actually informs our interior life. Jesus wants to be invited into the joy of our heart. Where is that exactly? Where is that heart? Some of us have experienced traumatic things in our lives. We have deep wounds. We need healing. Invite Jesus there. Some of us are lost. We are trying to know and respond to our vocation within the church. What is God calling me to? We have big decisions, big family decisions. Our children are all in college and they need help. Fill in the blank. Whatever it is, invite Jesus into the anxiety and worry and stress of these things. 
Jesus wants to find you waiting and watching and receiving his love. This last week, I was listening to this religious sister talk about an experience she had when she was walking near the streets near her convent. She had on a religious habit, and it was around the time of Halloween. So you can imagine a religious sister and a religious habit during the time of Halloween. As she passed a couple of young kids on the street, one of them said to her, are you for real? <clears throat> oh, it's a good question. Like, are you for real? And maybe that's the question of the Lord for all of us. Like, with your faith, with your love for God, that you, with all that we say we believe in, with our practices, our devotions, Jesus is asking you, like, are you for real? Or is this just going through the motions of our life and our faith? Because Jesus is saying, I am real. And we need this relationship. Preparing the way, making space for Jesus in our hearts, this means being real with Jesus. Be real with yourself. We don't save ourselves. That's an old heresy, although continually made new in every generation. We don't get to make up our own religion that's another heresy, continually made new in every generation. In fact, in life, we don't get to choose many things. But we can and we can choose to delight in the gift that is our creation. We can delight in the way God has made us. We can delight in the abundance of grace and gifts the Lord gives to us. God made me, he created me, he loved me into existence and said, you are good. Be real. Don't spend so much time trying to change reality or live in some virtual reality or trying and believing that reality is constantly changing and is just whatever I want it to be. We can't live that way. We have to see the truth. We have to constantly be looking for what is true and good and beautiful. Jesus is real. A friend of mine recently commented about how her two-year-old son loves, to, when they go to the church, he loves to go up and kneel in front of the altar of the church. He's two. He's, you know. He'll go up there and he'll kneel down and he'll say, Jesus, I love you. Mary, I love you. It's a prayer. And it's real. And along the way, we lose that sincerity of our love for Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Amen. That is all this season is about. In fact, that's all our Christian life is about. It's what our whole spiritual good is. Loving and receiving the love of Jesus. This is how we prepare the way for the Lord. Praying, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, thank you for loving me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We may sow in tears, but we shall reap rejoicing. With that in mind, we turn to God in our adversity, anticipating the day when we rejoice. For the church, that we may gain the strength and resolve to fill in empty valleys facing those who are poor and despairing, giving material assistance to those most in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they make low the mountains and hills we have built with weapons of war and destruction, smoothing the way to global peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those in authority, that they make straight the winding roads that thwart our progress toward fairness and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our <clears throat> For those in danger of being without heat or sheltered during this time of year when the weather grows cold, that they may have a warm place to call home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all of us, that we may take to heart John the Baptist's call to repent of our sins and prepare for the coming of the Lord into the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the soul of Phyllis Belden, that she may have eternal peace in the hands and in the face of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear these prayers we make today to Jesus whose coming we proclaim in joyous expectation. Through Christ our Lord, amen.
over to Chalice's also. It's over first. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Song to Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni Sun Celi et Fera, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Excelsis. Be 
you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for then we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace. and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, 
in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs. With John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you, Father. Thank you. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ, body of Christ, body of Christ, the body of Christ, Amen. the blood of Christ, the blood of Christ. by the door. Body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. Good morning. Good morning. This Wednesday, December 8th, is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Masses in English are 12.05 with Father Irwin and 6.30 with Father Lepak. The Spanish Mass will be 8 p.m. with Father Felipe Martinez. The parish office will be closed this day. The Advent Confession schedule is Tuesdays, 11.15 to noon, Wednesdays, 5 to 6 p.m., Thursday, 11.15 to noon, and Friday, 10.30 to 11.45, all in the chapel, and Saturday, 3 to 4.30 p.m. in the church. On December 12th, St. Joseph will celebrate with Our Lady of Guadalupe with Songs for Mary at 5.30 a.m. here in the church. Then join us for a delicious bread and hot cocoa in the gym. After the 1 p.m. Mass, we will be celebrating Our Lady of Guadalupe Fiesta in the gym, and all are welcome. The Knights of Columbus invite you to the Knights Breakfast after each Mass today. With your support, they can help our parish and many charities. God bless you. It's a, um, a privilege, I think, and a joy to be able to uh, distribute uh, the precious blood again. And so I want to thank all of our communion ministers who helped to do that. I promise we'll get a schedule to you soon about that. And, um, and we're looking to be having two cups, one on either side. And um, just to, for the communion ministers, these pillars that are near the side doors, that's where we'll stand, um, or you will stand to distribute Holy Communion. And also, after Holy Communion is over, just for the communion ministers, all you have to do is bring the, the cup to that table and just set it there the deacon or priest will purify, okay? Thank you. And um, again, let's um, welcome back Deacon Steve. We're happy to step it down. Some of our parishioners who are involved in the Our Lady of Guadalupe Novena um, created this beautiful shrine to our Blessed Mother, um, wanting to um, incorporate the statue of St. Joseph and so really the way they kind of looked at it and designed it was for those, for those to go together. So this will be up just until December 12th. And so if you'd like to come forward and see closer the, um, the shrine and also to pray, please feel welcome to do so. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Speaking, Jesus has your God. 